This is Big Daddy Bill, a retired NYPD detective and an award-winning filmmaker in a class all his own. By day, a mild-mannered stay-at-home dad leading a double life. At night, he and his partner, Archon, martial artist and extreme athlete, cover each other's back to fulfill their mission. A never-ending quest to uncover the truth about mysterious phenomena and strange happenings that seem to occur on a daily basis. The adventures are mighty and many for the men of Area One. Well, as a kid, I always wanted to be one of two things, either an astronaut or a cowboy. My math teacher informed me that I might not have the right stuff to become an astronaut. She's probably right. Look at the size of me. I probably never fit in a capsule. Access granted. But uh, I did have the makers to be a cowboy, so uh, I carried a six-shooter for the NYPD. I noticed that I had a very different outlook from my friends and my family pretty much at a, at a, a very early age. I was assigned to some of the most elite units in the NYPD, including one codenamed The Swamp for secret works and mysterious projects. Later, I was transferred to a unit called Taru. The Black Ops were the Mission Impossible within the department. As a stay-at-home dad, I've never really lost that sense of adventure or discovery, you know, to be part of a team. Our adventure begins in Bunker 3. The bunker system, converted Cold War military installations, adapted perfectly for the housing of unique tactical equipment. I'm checking out this video on YouTube. A guy's got a UFO over the Bronx. It's been going on for over a year. I definitely think it's something we should check out. From the audio we have is his girlfriend or wife saying that, you know, she can't see Play the see audio. It. He's trying to get it to focus on what focus on. We reached out to a fellow who posted a series of UFO videos on YouTube. Well, he's very, very deep into the UFO stuff. Like, you know, all his footage is, is amazing. We spoke on the phone earlier as part of the investigation that you've actually captured some uh, UFO on DVD. My gut tells me that this is not human activity. Okay. These, they're doing things that conventional aircraft are, are not supposed to do. It's twisting? Is that twisting? It's turning around. Its orientation is turning around towards us, whatever it is. Now that's totally different than this one. Correct. What the hell is that? They just appear. They I just... watched that one where one, one disappeared and another one took mm -hmm. its place. Mm -hmm. Literally sitting right over. Yeah. Yeah. That, was de that was definitely interesting. You got to see what I have on DVD. Hmm. This is Mike. This is Mike. Mike. Where were you? Where did you observe? Uh, it was on the east side of Manhattan, over the river. Yeah, this, ci this city is a hot spot for more than one type of or species of craft. Following up on the reported sighting of the unidentified flying anomaly that had been video captured and posted online, the survey team headed north of the Bronx to the suburbs of Terra City along the mighty Hudson River. I don't get it. You need a permit to take a picture of somebody's flowers? Descending deeper into the temple structure, the team encounters unusual electronic interference and equipment failure. To a major, major, major frequency problem. You get all kinds of noise and buzzes. Archon uncovers evidence of cult activity while exploring the crumbled ruins of a 19th century temple of the gods. It's all secret messages to each other that the normal person, so you wouldn't notice this, but that's clearly a mason symbol. I just came to a school of dead fish, and there's some dead waterfowl, and some of the vegetation seems burned over there. Didn't the guy say the ship came out of the water over there? It came up out of the water, hovered, and it took off. Status report. Status report. Hey, listen, my systems have detected that you guys are attracting some local attention. It's time you hightail it out of there. I am not climbing down there. The rope's in the car. I ain't doing if, it. If we need it, I'll go back and get it. And for, and for that matter, I'll rappel down there if I have to. We'll see what happens. Jim! Jim! Good morning. You are both my wife to divorce me. Stay tuned for the continuing adventures of Area One. You're watching Area One. Hey, Big Daddy, you check out this piece? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I was wondering, growing up in the Bronx, did you do a lot of graffiti art? Not so much so. My friends and I were more like vandals. Well, I caught up to an artist. His name is John Crash Matos. And from his hideout studio, he told me what inspired him to create works of art like the one we have here. John is also doing another piece of American pop art down at the Houston Street Wall. He's going to tell us all about it. I was always painting and drawing at, you know, at the age of two. You know, it, it, it showed. My brother always got like G.I. Joe's and um, Lincoln Logs and you know, all that stuff. I got paid by number sets. I had an older sister who used to work and when she got paid, she would give me a dollar and I would go downstairs to the, to the candy store and buy comic books. Comic books and early anime uh, were like my major influences. So I was 
four, five, six. We're talking about Speed Racer, Kimba the White Lion, uh, Gigantor, the Eighth Man, all you know, all those things, um, and the comic books. You know, Captain America, Spider Man, uh, Daredevil, uh, especially the Marvel comics. To me, it was just a little more realistic than a guy coming from another planet, crashing here and living in a farm. I was going from the Bronx all the way down to Pearl Street to Murray Bertram High School, and the whole wave of graph was hitting me. I was like, the trains coming and going and tags, and I was like, you know, something starts clicking. Listen, of all the things that could have been doing in the street, graph was the most simplest, the, the safest thing. I mean, you're talking about, you know, growing up in the South Bronx, every other person was either dealing drugs or was a thief or a stick-up kid or, you know, drug addict or locked up, you know. You either had sports, which I was pretty good at, or art, which I thought, which I, I knew I was good at. The tenacity, you know. When you, when you believe in something and you know you're doing something and you think it's right and you stick with it, no matter what, who, what, where, when, whatever is said, it goes out the window because, yo, this is the deal, this is the real. I mean, when I did the, the, the wall on Houston Street, um, you know, I mean, I was approached by it. I, I was approached to do the wall but it wasn't, it wasn't a definite thing. So I was, you know, you know, I conversed with God. I was like, yo, look, I, you know, I would love to do this. I would love to do this wall. But you know what? If it ain't to be, it ain't to be. And I'm thinking, Lord, you know, this is a big wall. I mean, I was on the sky. I'm like, this is a big wall. And I'm going to be by myself. You know? And I'm thinking, God, look, you know, I said it very loudly. I'm like, look, you know, you know I'm, I'm glad to do this wall. But, yo, I, I, I certainly can't do this on my own. I'm, you know, 52 year old man on a scaffold. I mean, I don't need to prove anything, but I need to prove to myself that, you know, not that I can hang with the younger guys painting, but I, could, I need to prove to myself that I still can do this. So from wherever the strength came, dude, I knocked it out. And then when I put a small quote for we are blessed to bless others, uh, that just, that, that people were just commenting on that little thing because it's, it's beyond a scriptural thing. It's a human, a human thing. Glad you're enjoying the show. Hey, partner, did you know filmmaking got its start right here in the Boogie Down Bronx? You talking about that place over at West Farms? Exactly, Biograph Studios. It's where the Bronx cowboy Harry Carey started out. So did Lionel Barrymore. And Lillian Gish. And don't forget founding members of United Artists, Mary Pickford. And none other than D.W. Griffith, a true filmmaking pioneer. We caught up to another filmmaker with his roots right here in the Bronx, and his name is Chris Raffaelli. And he's going to tell us all about his latest flick, The Grasslands. I love film since I was a kid. And I just always had a passion for it. People go to the movies to escape. I went to the movies for the experience. The independent guys that came out of the era, the 60s and 70s, definitely inspired me and says, I can do this. I can tell a personal story. And, I, and, and that's the type of films I, that I tried to make is something personal. I took a, an old name of the grasslands that they used to use for the Bronx and I incorporated an old style of filmmaking with it, shooting on film, shooting black and white, and telling a simple story about struggle between people and try to put as many universal themes, love, hate, revenge, into it. We shot in the basement of a pet shop. And the reason I did that is because these people are below the animals. They're lower than the animals. We shot in the bowling alley that is below everybody. I wanted to have a look and a feel that subconsciously you were drawn into. Subconsciously you're going down. Subconsciously you're with these people who were technically low lives, who are feed off of everybody's uh, life. Working with the cast that I had, I mean, people that have been around and been in the business, Peter Green, Chuck Zito, James Matteo, uh, Louis Venaria, uh, Arthur Nascarella, these guys are seasoned veterans and to work with them uh, was amazing because I knew, I said to them, you know, listen, I'm, you, you got the part for a reason. I know what you can do. I want you to go in and I want you to do it. Understand the part. They understood it. We have conversations with them and they understood the material and knew what I wanted. And I trusted them to deliver and they delivered for me. The challenges to me became exciting. You didn't know what was going to happen. Billy Lappy on set, next cop, run and tackle a guy in the middle of a scene. <laughs> we wanted to film it. We were like, can't we film it? When I wrote The Grasslands back in 93, 94, when I wrote it, I said, this is a film that I want to see. 
And then I wanted to take it to the next level and film it. I wanted everybody in the world to see it. Realizing that's not going to happen. People, oh, I won't see this. I won't do that. It won't see it. It won't reach the theaters. It won't, you know, distribution, all that part. You stay true to yourself and stick with a story that you know and able to shoot it and get it out there. There are ways to get your film out there right now. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, trying to utilize today's technology to shoot something that won't cost me an arm and a leg and the other arm and the other leg and put something out there that's personal because people aren't getting that anymore. The personal stories and everybody's going for the big movies, the big dollars, the 3Ds, and that's great. And, and I, I'm not you know, bashing that by any means because I love these movies also. But the personal stories and in the, of independent filmmaking is getting lost. There are people out there that are just like me uh, that want to see something different. I mean, because we grew up on, we were on that cusp of black and white and color. And, you know, black and white TV, and there were black and white films, you know, the old films and stuff. So to the young, to somebody who's 15, 16, 20 years old today, seeing a black and white film is something new and it's fresh to them. And I always had that in the back of my head that you're going to run into kids that are going to film school, this and that, that will find its niche audience, that will find people that want to see something different, that's something that's shot different, something that, but to us, it's, it's an old style. You've just experienced Area 1 programming. Now put an eyeball on another adventure. For more Area One, subscribe to us on all your favorite social media sites. Why don't you do it right now? Right now. Mm -hmm.